good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you are when you're watching this video. My name is Melissa. I'm the digitizer behind designsbylittlebee.com. Today I'm going to do, as I always say, what I hope is a quick video about how to personalize an item in the hoop using Embrilliance Essentials. But we all know I'm probably going to sit here and yammer for about mm, maybe 45 minutes. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to take this scalloped uh, fold-over lip balm holder, and I'm going to add a name to it. I'm also going to show you a couple of tips on how I make a really nice finished product that uh, you may not know. So I brought in my scallop lip balm fold over design. Now I thought it looked a little plain. I left this area, uh, this is my design. I left this area open because I wanted to be able to like add a letter or a small little mini design. I don't know, something like that. So in this case, I'm going to put my nickname, Liss, L-I-S, on it. So I click on the A, and that brings up the last um, font that I used. I used a tiny circle monogram the last time. I don't want that one. I'm going to type in Liss in the box, click Set. I'm going to go down to, um, which did I use? Maximus, which is the font I want to use. I'm going to go up a little bit bring it uh, zoom in I want to turn this sideways so I click that arrow right there click on the name and drag it down to the area I am putting it in it's way too tall so what am I gonna do I'm gonna go shrink Wow you can really shrink it a lot and then I'm going to just move it need to leave room for a snap right there so there's my name well, that really doesn't look very good, does it? You know why? Because I, I resized it so much. You can look and see how much you resized it right up here. I resized it, I shrunk it 40% this way, and I left it and actually enlarged it a little bit, 110% this way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to make the I and the S a little taller to take up that space. So I'm going to click on the green box in the middle of each letter and just resize that one letter. Um, I like that. Now, very important thing to do, especially when you've resized it a lot, especially when you're gonna be stitching on vinyl. I want you to grab your font, or your, um, your word, go right over here to where it says stitch, click on that. Do you see where it says comp zero point? I'm gonna grab that slider, and I usually take mine to two, However, in this case, I did already stitch this out and it still wasn't big enough. So in this case, I would do it up to three. And it increased pull compensation on this word so that these little bars, the little serifs um, at the top and bottom aren't going to be so thin. Now, if you have an ideal um, millimeter that you want them to stitch out to, you can see that by going up here to where this says Stitch Simulator. We all know that one of my favorite things about Embrilliance is that when you run it over a button, it shows you exactly what it's going to do. Some other software I've heard just has like a ruler, and it doesn't tell you what that's going to do. And I know that's kind of obvious. You say, oh, a ruler is going to do that, obviously. You know what? It's not obvious to everybody. So this tells you this is going to run the Stitch Simulator. Click it. Now you see you're going to run your bring, uh, click on the little box and tab it all the way along to the black. Now, you can see it is stitching out the L. I'm gonna go over here to the front and back arrows and I'm gonna go one stitch at a time. Now you can see it's going back and forth, okay? Stitch length is right here. 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 1.5, 1 1.5. It's gonna show you the length of each individual stitch that it's making on that serif right there on that L. Now for me, 1.5 or 1.6, that's like my bare minimum of what I want, especially on vinyl because vinyl is thicker. You get anything under 1.6 or 1.8 and it's really going to hammer into the vinyl and it's going to be too thin to really be bold enough to read. Um, that's my opinion and my preference. So I think that's safe. The three pull compensation is fine with me. Now, one other thing that happens when I stitch out a, a, um, a font, I like to look at 
Do you see how it goes straight from the eye to the dot in the eye? Okay, that's probably going to just jump across without tying off. I hate that. I want my dots. I want it to be separate. I don't want it to just jump up there to the eye and then have that little running stitch in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to get right to the end of that eye and I'm going to hit stop. Okay. I'm going to pick any color. Doesn't matter. Look, orange. Great. Fantastic. Now you see that it has turned the word list into two separate um, words, really. Two separate items that my machine's going to stitch out. What this means is that it's going to stitch L and the lower part of the letter I. Then it's going to stop. It's going to tie off and stop. And it's going to tell me, do you want to start again? I'm going to say yes. And it's going to start at that dot on the I. Okay? So that means that um, you can still stitch it in the same color if you want. Just don't change your, your thread. But that means that it's not going to do that jump right there from the eye that I hate. That's just one way that I do like a super high quality um, stitch out. I love to do that. I always stop mine in between the dots on the eyes. Now, um, in a perfect world, you see where this, um, whoa, sorry. In a perfect world, you see where this little um, st stitch is kind of outlined right there. In a perfect world, I would stop and change that using my um, edit stitches that I have with Enthusiast. For this example, I didn't do that. I'm not going to do that. I feel like that's being a little nitpicky. If you see this far away, you're not going to be able to see it. So I don't care. So I'm going to hit zero to bring my whole hoop into frame. I can see that. I like the way it looks. Keep in mind that if you are um, paranoid about this and you change this back to a black because it bugs you on the screen, it's going to turn it back into one step because it thinks that's one step. So don't do that. Leave it the separate color. Let it start over on the dot on the eye, if that's what you want to do. Now, when doing this, if you want to send this to your machine, I save mine this way right here because I just jump to the personalization when I'm stitching and then I go back to the finishing stitches. I don't try to drag this up into the design. If you do that, you have to mess with the hit, um, remove hidden stitches button, make sure it saved it without... Um, removing any stitches from this uh, placement step. And y'all, I just don't care about that. It's really one word. So I just, when it comes time for the personalization, I skip forward, run that on my machine, then I go back to the finishing stitches. Now I already have this project stitched out. I would love to show it to you. So I'm gonna stop this screen record and I'm going to go to a regular video and show you my finished project. Well, that was pretty quick and painless, wasn't it? I'm sorry if I talked too fast. The good news is you can always go back and watch the video again and rewind it to a place you need to watch it. Here is the finished project, as promised, that I was just personalizing using my software. Oh, gosh, you gotta excuse this desk. Uh, this is actually a big plastic table and I used to paint Christmas ornaments on it. So there's all sorts of paint and markers and all sorts of wonderful graffiti on this desk. Anyway, you can see here that the dot on the eye is nice and separated um, from the other part of the eye. I did notice after I stitched it out that if you can see the L and the I do have a jump stitch between them. So if you're super picky about jump stitches like that, you could um, always remove that one too by stopping it as it gets to the end of the L and changing colors as it gets to the eye, just like I did for the dot. You can also see that on the serifs of these letters, like the L, it is a little thin for my liking. I wish I had bumped it up to three, like I mentioned in the video. Now, one thing I do want to mention that um, doesn't have anything to do with essentials or embrilliance or merging or anything like that. When I put this pocket on earlier, I am a terrible klutz. I'm very bad at aim and at securing my uh, pockets and things under the hoop. And of course, this snap was crooked. So instead of throwing the project away or trying to line it back up or anything like that, because I'd already unhooped it, I removed this snap using some pliers. Well, not this one, but the other snap. I put a new snap, inserted the cap in here, inside, as you can see. Oh, another thing about this one, I used cutaway stabilizer as a inside for this one. I didn't use chalkboard fabric or anything. Isn't that cool? 
Anyway, um, so I put the new cap in there. I put a fresh snap on the front. And then I actually used my tabletop press and it, act, it even smushed the snap with this backing on it. Now, I don't recommend that. I don't know how sturdy it's going to be since it had that layer. You can even kind of, can you still see it? No, you can't even see where that circle was, where I smashed it with my tabletop press. But um, I'm not sure, you know, how well it smashes if you still have that layer behind it. But it's just a note that even if you mess up and forget the snap or your snap is super crooked and you've already unhooped it, there is still hope. You can still, in an emergency, put that snap on there. Or some people just hate doing it before you stitch the final step. So, I don't know. It's just a thought, just a suggestion that, you know, hope is not lost if, if you're like me and you can't line things up and do it right the first time. So, anyway... I hope this video was helpful to show you how to edit some fonts after you get them in your software. You're not limited to what you just type out. You can change and hack and edit them to um, different sizes. You can edit the pull compensation and the way it's gonna jump across the letters. And it's just one of the many reasons why I love Embrilliance Essential Software. If this video has helped you and you'd like to purchase any of their modules for machine embroidery, I'm thrilled if you use my affiliate link that I post under all of my tutorial videos. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video and I'll chat with you in the group. Bye.